education, public safety, health care, government, business. These and other important issues affecting our local community are identified and discussed with local and civic leaders here on Community Impact. Now with today's guest, here's our host, Jay Police. Welcome to Community Impact. Our guest today, Stephen Surratt, who is the co-founder of a very interesting uh, business and organization called College Benefits Research Group. And uh, if you have a young kid in high school and you're thinking about college and you're waking up in the middle of the night and uh, just jarring out of bed and thinking, how am I going to pay for this or where is this kid going to go? This might be the solution here. So let's welcome Stephen. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. For yeah, me. yeah. College Benefits Research Group, very interesting organization, very interesting name. Uh, how did this all come about? Let's talk a little bit about your background and sure. how this particular business came about. Well, uh, CBRG, as, uh, as we like to call it, or my kids call it Caburge, right? <laughs> um, it, it came out of really um, where we, we started in helping families plan for their financial futures. So, you know, I've been doing uh, financial services for over 20 years. And um, I had actually gone to Rutgers, got my accounting degree, but never wanted to touch a tax return. So that's why I went into financial services. And, you know, as somebody who's advising people on what to do and how to plan for their futures, a big part of that is helping people plan how to handle the financial impact of college for their kids. Oh, my gosh. You ain't kidding. Right. 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 So... Our advice was pretty much the standard advice. Start saving, save a lot, and don't forget to save, right? <laughs> so that you can have as much money as you can to handle the high cost of college. Um, but what we had found was that what kind of answers could you give a family who has kids in high school already, and now they're looking at, you know, they tried to save or maybe they wish they would have saved, but they didn't save enough, and now what do they do? Right. So really have to give some kudos to my partner, David Slater. Um, he he wasn't satisfied with, well, just find a cheap school. Right. So he started to research. Is there anything you could do to either be eligible for aid, lower the cost of college, do financial strategies that could help you um, in that regard so that you could still find a great school and offer your kid all the opportunities they deserve? And so he found that there actually were, and he enrolled me in that um, somewhat reluctantly. Um, but once I saw that there was this whole world of advice um, that we could really help families uh, learn about, um, we started to research, learn more, and implement that into our practices. Now, what we didn't expect is that we started to get a lot of people coming to us that were referred from existing clients specifically only wanting to talk about college. And the demand was so great and the desire from these families to really find answers and get help was so tremendous that it struck me, you know, there's a demand out there, there's a real need in our community for this kind of expertise and guidance. And so back in 2008, I said to said David, you know, we really should open this up as a separate business and really just have people that don't want to engage in our holistic financial planning, just really start to focus on college. And, uh, and that's how it was created. Because there's such a need, because people are so motivated by that. Now, when you're a financial planner, you, you had described this to me. I mean, you have to sort of look for business you know absolutely yeah yeah and 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 develop a relationship with a potential client get them to trust you but in this case people are highly motivated it's about their kids it's and it's a panicky situation correct yeah correct because you mentioned about save early save a lot keep saving right but there are people who probably show up and they haven't done any of that right and they're absolutely out of their minds and they need answers and they need help sure that's yeah. one or they've saved but if you look at what's happened over the last 25 years with the cost of college 
going up anywhere between seven and nine percent a year. How could you save? How could the regular family save enough to keep up with that kind of tuition inflation? So, so many families are finding themselves that they've put away some money. It's just no way near to handle the forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar a year experience, and then they have two, three, four kids. And this is one of the biggest financial impacts a family is going to face. So this is a big deal. And, uh, and so, yes, people are super motivated. And, you know, we would have people coming in that were referred to us that we had never met before, just showing us everything they've got going on with their finances, um, talking about, you know, their kids and really very private things, um, very personal things. And why are they so forthcoming? Because they really understand at that point, things are imminent and they need help, mm -hmm. right? So they've been hoping that it, there would be a way that it would work out and now they're feeling like, I don't know what to do. So there is a big need and people are motivated and that's really when I, I felt like, you know what, let's do this as a specific focus, um, really from a business perspective Having you know a, a large pool of very motivated potential clients makes sense to me. Sure, okay, absolutely. That's one. Yeah, and I also want to love what I do every day, and I do love helping people. And um, and this is a real opportunity for me to incorporate business and loving what I do um, into a successful model. Tremendous. So you and your partner David, yes. uh, financial background primarily. Right. Yes, but. As you know, there's more than just finances in this whole mix. Right. So then you turn to another partner, you reach out to somebody else. Correct. Um, when we started to, to uh, start to work with more and more families, um, we were very aware that it's not just finding a way to afford school, but it's finding a way to afford the right school. Right. I have three kids myself. My son this year, he's a junior, and he's an exceptional kid. Um, and I don't want to just be motivated to where I could send him that's cheap. I want him to find a school where he's going to be happy, successful, learn what he needs to learn, get the values he needs so he's ready to work in the world. Like every father loves his son, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, so we had the financial expertise what we didn't know enough about was the 4,000 colleges that are out there, um, not from a financial sense, but from the academic side. Now, in our college planning world, there's usually two different kinds of planners, the financial perspective planners and the academic and social planners. We wanted to be able to offer our clients the highest level of both. And that's why we started to, uh, to see if there was the right kind of an advisor um, who has the kind of credentials on that side that we have on our side um, that we can incorporate as, as part of the CBRG process. Mm. And that really is where we found uh, uh, another one of our partners, Janet Lauren, and she's amazing. Um, she's been doing this for decades and it's, she's solely focused on that academic and social side. Um, literally helped, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students and their families go through this process. Mm. And um, since we've had had her on board, which is uh, almost two years now, our our the level of service that we could provide our clients has just really been uh, tremendously improved. And uh, she brings that that in incredibly important perspective to every client experience we have. Mm. Is there a, a typical situation that you deal with or is it really one size does not fit all? Everybody's very different. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely uh, not one size fits all. Um, we do a lot of community work and we do free workshops um, in and around our area, uh, usually one or two a month. And they're pretty well attended. You know, we've had as many as 100 people come. Well, as you say, this is, people are highly motivated. They're this. motivated. Yeah, yeah. And what we talk about at the workshop are um, sort of the, the broad perspectives of what all families need to know and students need to know when they're starting out in this process. So it's more one size fits all, 
We don't really delve into the specifics because every family is different. Every financial situation, student attributes, emotional issues, you know, the, the family is unique and that's why we're really customized planners. We work one-on-one -on -one with a particular family, helping them craft the best plan that they can. Mm -hmm. So definitely not one size fits all. And uh, I think that's also a big part of why a lot of people don't get great results when they do it on their own, because where are they getting their information from? Well, the schools themselves who are doing all the marketing, right? Um, they're, they're getting it sometimes from the internet and who knows the quality of that stuff. A lot of times it's just their friends or other family members, you know, my cousin Joe's kid went to X and it was great. Well, what's their situation? What are the uh, attributes of the student? What are the needs of the student? And, you know, if you send your kid to the same place that cousin Joe's kid went, is that really a way to choose a college? Um, now probably you, not. You have a son who's a junior in high school now? Correct. Now, off air, you said he's a terrible client. <laughs> he's probably my worst client, and I know when he sees no. this, he's going to be mad at me. But, yeah. um, but it he, illustrates a point. Yes, and I don't mean he's, by any stretch, a terrible kid. He's an amazing kid, um, very motivated student. He does very well, works hard. Um, he's cool. Um, he's a phenomenal debater, speech and debate. I have no idea where he got that from. But, um, but, you know, he's in the same high school as every one of his classmates and, and going kind of through the same process. And it's, you know, he talks to his friends and it's a lot of colleges that they've heard of. So it's the popular ones in the school. And, uh, you know, I work with students from high schools all around our area. And it's amazing to me how many times I'll hear the same 10 or 12 schools that every kid from that school is coming in talking to me about schools they're they're interested in, right? And then I'll go to a different high school and it'll be 10 different schools, huh. right? And, and so you could really see from our perspective how they arrive where they've arrived. And so uh, what I challenge my son to do is just like any client is, you know what? Forget about the names of colleges that you want to go to. Right now it's too early. What I want you to start concentrating are, what are your skills? What's your interests? Let's talk about your values, right? Your personality, and let's work with those as the criteria of what we need to find throughout this process in a college. And so now we're looking at colleges through the lens of really what fits the student instead of trying to say, you know what, I love X school and I hope I fit. Right. It's backwards and that's why so many students are not finding the right schools the first time. That's one thing, the transfer rate is higher than it ever was. And the graduation rate, on time graduation rate, and this is a statistic we give out at the workshops and it always amazes people. Um, De uh, Department of Education did a study to find out how many kids are getting degrees on time, okay? It's less than half. Huh. Less than half, and some schools are even worse. So that's not okay. If we're talking about affording college, well, they're always thinking, how am I gonna afford four years? Try affording five years oh or six years. Yeah, Steve, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back, we're gonna talk much more about this. You're watching Community Impact. We'll be right back. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent? One in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million.
The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back to Community Impact. Uh, we are talking to Stephen Surratt. Uh, Stephen is the co-founder of College Benefits Research Group, CBRG. And uh, Steve, we had to interrupt you, but you were talking about basically, and, I, and I'll pose the question this way, what, what does the, the student and the parents have to ask themselves when they're going through this very, very difficult process of, of choosing a, a, a college? You want to make sure that you're focusing on everything that's important. So don't let any one factor drive the process. It should be a balance. And we talk a balance, a, a balance of academic, social, and financial fit. Okay, so those are the three main perspectives. And one shouldn't dictate the other. You shouldn't just go ahead and make sure that you know, you're only looking things through financial because this is a value proposition, okay? If you're gonna send your student to a school where they're not gonna get everything they need academically and socially, then you're not getting the value you need. So that shouldn't drive it. But also academically, if you send your kid to a school where you think, you know, this is just perfect and it's got an amazing name and, you know, I don't care what school, but, you know, call it an Ivy League school, but you're not focusing on making sure you have a financial way to make this work, then you could find that it's not going to, the whole thing will fall apart as well. Um, and, and this is has a lot to do, especially when people have their first kid going off to college, they want to be able to, you know, follow the herd, send their kid to whatever school they perceive as being the top school, and they'll find a way to do it. And then they find reality hits them, you know, throughout not having, any, you know, any money, um, sacrificing how they're going to live in retirement, or taking out big loans and having to deal with financing that. And then all of a sudden, brother or sister comes along, and they find they can't offer the same kind of opportunities in their mind that they were able to give their first kid. So when we're working with a family, one of the big things we, focusing, we focus on is building a plan for all their kids. And I think that surprises some people, right? They know they're coming for their student now, and we're talking about their youngest one, right? Let's find a plan to pay. That's great. Yep. Yeah, and like you say, one size does not fit all. And anybody who's had several children knows they're all distinctly very different. I have twins, yeah. right? We're, we're convinced they're not from the same parents. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the milkman came in or something. <laughs> I don't know. One looks a lot like the fertility doctor, but I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But that's an interesting concept. And, and the parents are surprised when you, when you say that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also, it's, it's actually refreshing to them yeah. because they're thinking about this stuff, right, too. Right, right, right. And so, it, you know, we've heard many, many times once we started working with a family, that the, the pressure has been lifted because they have a plan. It's a reasoned plan. It's a realistic plan. And, it's, and they know what they need to do, when they need to do it, and now they have a plan to do it well. So we've heard from students that they start to relax more. Their grades have even gone up. And the parents now, they start to relax more. They're a lot less stressed about it. I'm not saying there's not work to do, okay? Our clients, they're our partners. We know there's work to do. We've got to do the research. We've got to get out there and visit the schools. We've got to do the analysis. But we're doing it right, and we know when to do it so that you can manage this process and still get great results. Mm -hmm. Very gratifying when a client comes back and says, you know, we hired you to help us try to save money on college, but we got so much more that we never expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, do you, what do you think are, are some of the common misnomers, um, the common fallacies that, uh, that a lot of us just hold on to? I make too much money. I'm not going to get any free money. Uh -huh. 
Um, so I'm never going to qualify for aid. Right. Um, so they don't even bother applying. We say everyone should apply for financial aid. Yeah. No question about it. Um, my kid has to go to an Ivy League school to have any kind of opportunity of you know getting a decent job. Um, what else? Um, my kid has to go to an Ivy League school, huh? Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. that's another one. Yeah. Um, my kid, you know, my kid will definitely go and. Uh, get a degree in four years. There's no way it's going to take him or her more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I think most parents believe that, and yet when the students actually go to the school, do you think the school's really going to be upset if it takes your kid a fifth or sixth yeah. year? I, 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 I don't think they have any skin in the game, generally. Correct. You know? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So it's beneficial to them in to a degree. Yeah, there's well, and, and you're yeah. talking cash flow. I, yeah. I, I don't want to be cynical, but yeah. um, I believe that there's probably something to that. And you can hear it um, when you go and meet with the schools. They'll talk about how many double majors they like to have their kids do a double major, a double major minor. Oh, don't forget to join a frat and get involved in the school community and maybe take a job. Try packing all that into four years. Yeah. Right. Big pressure. Uh, Tremendous pressure. Right. So you really want to be um, proactive in analyzing um, what the kids can manage and make sure that you're setting expectations for your student, that you're measuring those expectations uh, as they go through, that they have some skin in the game definitively, and that uh, this is really about being a four-year plan. Mm. What about community college, two-year community colleges? Yeah. How uh, do they fit in? I mean, you know, because uh, um, they could be ben beneficial, right? I mean, wonderfully beneficial. There's no question. Um, you know, the community colleges do a wonderful job in providing a two-year education that's very affordable. Um, so sometimes finances really dictate uh, a path a family has to take. You know, the, the economy has been rocky. We all know that. And some families have been hit hard. Um, and so uh, that's part of it. Um, also, some students uh, will thrive more at a community college, maybe commuting and easing that transition um, to, to being independent. Um, Not every student is ready to leave home at uh, the age of 17 or 18 to go that's to school. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So they do a wonderful job with that. Also, if you go there and you do well, um, we say if you're going that route and it makes sense for that student and family, make sure they're focused on getting that degree, mm -hmm. that two-year associate's degree. Um, you do that and you do well, and then you can look to transfer to a state school. They'll take your entire two years if you have that associate's degree as fulfilling the two-year liberal arts requirement at the four-year university, and then you could finish in another two years at that state school, like a Rutgers or TCNJ or Ramapo, one of the other fine schools right, right. we have, and be done with a four-year degree, just like their classmates were, for a lot less money, and uh, certainly a good option. One of the things to note, though, is that there's there's Unfortunately, too many students that end up going to a community college that, that kind of defaulted there, right? Because they either couldn't or didn't believe they could get into a four-year school. So they went there and figuring, well, it's easier. I have news for you. It's not easier. <laughs> yeah. They will challenge you, sometimes even more so at some of the schools. You're going to have to work your tail off. And because a lot of the students there aren't ready to do that, Sometimes you don't have the same kind of support from your student body academically through student groups and just, you know, the culture um, where people are really working hard. So I will challenge a student that's going to community college to be ready to work at least as hard as he or she would at any other school that happens to be a four-year school. And you had brought up a program which would make it very financially. Um, sure, the, the NJ Stars program. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't for, think a lot of people know about this, NJ Stars. It's NJ Stars. Yeah. Uh, you could go on a uh, great website for New Jersey, aid, and lots of different types of aid is HESSA, um, H-E-S-S-A uh, dot O-R-G. And they talk about this program where people could find out more about it. But um, if you're in the top 15% of your high school class, then you're eligible for this. And basically it makes tuition free at any of the community colleges. So you can go there for free. And then if you maintain, I think it's a 3-5 uh, 
Um, so pretty high GPA, but yeah. if you maintain above a 3.5 during that experience at community college, then they actually award you uh, significant money off the cost of a state school. Wow. Yep. That's, know, that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah. So real way to afford yeah. college. You know, I, I, I've been doing this program for a long time, and, uh, you know, I interview a lot of different types of people. I'm always amazed at the kind of programs that are out there but very few people know about. I mean, it's there, it's available, but I think, you know, uh, the job of you being an advocate or a conduit, really, uh, is to point these things out to people. Because um, right. most of the time, these things are out there and people don't realize that help is available to them. Exactly. Yeah, because what a solution if you're really struggling financially and you've got a, you know, a son or a daughter who's doing well um, academically. Right. Um, this is just a wonderful program for them. Right. Yeah, yeah. And the advice we give is you don't have to default to that program or any of the other ones that are available when your kid's a sophomore or a junior. You should go through the process of trying to build a list of colleges. And we talk about a top-down approach, finding as many schools that fit your criteria as you can, and then narrow them down through the process to come to a great list of anywhere between six and 12 schools where that student says, you know, I could go to any one of these schools and it's gonna have that great academic, social, and financial fit for me, yeah. right? That's where we want our kids to end up. And if community college happens to be part of that, that's great too. Yeah, you mentioned the word values too in looking for a school. And I think it's kind of upsetting for a lot of parents now. They they send their they spend forty to fifty to sixty thousand a year to send their kids to to be Marxists, <laughs> and it's not their value. Right, <laughs> right. So I have been accused of being a Chris Christie body double. So, so yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, so we won't talk about the Marxists. <laughs> but that is important, right? right? To find a school that matches your own values. Yeah. Or oh, least, there's there's yeah. no question about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you put me as, you know, uh, into a school like Berkeley, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, guess what? That's not going to be congruent <laughs> yeah, with that, my world perspective, right? Yeah, that right? wouldn't be congruent with mine either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but it you, seems like so many schools are becoming Berkeley uh, these days. Yes, and, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the great schools... Um, the great schools want to offer an opportunity for a diverse perspective where you should feel free to explore and challenge your preconceived notions and your worldview Absolutely. and develop and grow. Yeah. Um, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And so... Yeah, um, that's what it is all about. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. for sure. So yeah. that's part of the value. Yeah. The other value we talk about is the value of the investment. Um, I happen to go to... Uh, a school with my son, right? My wife and I and my son, we were uh, going through New York State and we we're visited. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Though. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, no yeah. Problem. I want to hear that story. Okay. Oh, you have to tell me off air. Okay. We'll have you on again. Great. Yeah, yeah. Steve, what a pleasure. Oh, thank it's you so much font, for having me. Font of information. Thank you. And we're going to be interviewing your partner next week, too. So this is part of a two-part series that we're doing. But again, the, the organization is called College Benefits Research Group. We're talking with its co-founder, um, Stephen uh, Surratt, and we'll be talking with its, uh, its other co-founder next week. So more on this subject next week. Right. We call yeah. me. I'm funny. He's good looking. So you'll get good looking there. <laughs> it's a pleasure to talk to you. All right. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. You're watching Community Impact. You have been watching Community Impact, and we'll be back next week. Take care. You've been watching Community Impact, a public affairs presentation exploring issues that are important to the community of West Milford and the surrounding area of Passaic County and New Jersey. Community Impact is a production of WFME Television of West Milford, New Jersey. The opinions expressed on this program are those of our guests and not necessarily the views of the staff and management of WFME and Family Television. Thank you for watching and be sure to join us again next week at this same time for another edition of Community Impact.